morning, good evening, good night, Eagle MMA family. This is the Eagle's Nest, Mogwonk versus Better. And hey, guess what? We have Mogwonk on first right now. Mogwonk, how are we doing? We are doing fucking great, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know why. As soon as we went live, the audio delay completely disappeared, but... Yeah, no, I'm bro, I'm ready. Whatever the fuck mm -hmm. we're doing today, I'm mm -hmm. ready. Let's get this. Let's get Just this. Just let them know I've got the fit on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer vibes. Fuck, bro. Better MMA does not have that shit on. I guarantee he comes in here with a little fucking shirt and a jacket. He's just a China Max. He's a China Maxer. So let's, I want to get into the first question right away. So you are Irish, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Of are course. Are you currently intoxicated uh, under the influence of alcohol? Yes. Okay. That's, I mean, hey, listen, I kind of knew that. Um, but hey, we'll get it. We're, I, I mean, let's be honest. We kind of all knew that. Um, I want to get right on this. Speaking of Irish, speaking of Ireland, I recently watched a documentary. I have Irish blood, and I recently watched a documentary about the IRA, the uh, Irish Republican Army, I believe that stands for. Um, as an Irishman Absolutely. yourself, as an Irishman yourself, what are your thoughts on the... IRA, like, what does it mean to you? Do, do people in Ireland today even care or talk about the IRA? What is it in Ireland? So, the IRA are like the shadow people. So, they could be living next door to your granny. They'll be the nicest man in the neighborhood. And you'll never know that they're, they're in the IRA. Whereas, on the other side, you'll have the UDA, which is like Ulster Defense Association or whatever. So that'll be like the Protestant version, like blue versus red, basically. Mm -hmm. So the UDA are more, more like staunch, more like open tattoos. They'll like wear it with pride. They'll, you know, they'll try and like, you know, flaunt their, flaunt their shit. So it's kind of like two opposites. But if you're like, say, selling, trapping, whatever, in the hood, and you're not paying your fines to literally the mafia, um, they will probably at some point put your kneecaps in hmm. um so yeah that still happens um it's not like it's been about fucking 30 years since there was shooting in the streets you know but hmm. not that i experienced any of that it's been hill my whole life but yeah i think where i'm from is probably like one of the hardest parts at the time but not now so it's larpers now you know yeah they they, they, did, they still exist though. yeah they did uh, you know commit a lot of acts of uh, terrorism uh, maybe not the greatest absolutely your, maybe not the greatest way to get your message across maybe <laughs> it is who knows um but speaking of that the yep. ira was created because of britain's oppression on uh ireland trying to like segregate and everything and trying to control ireland yeah, yeah. what is your specific and if you do have you know this you know specific what is your specific beef with britain like what is what are, what are some qualities about britain and british people that you just fucking hate Okay. Um, I have obviously like loads of friends on both sides, but it's like they shove everything down your throat. So there'll be about a thousand Union Jacks, Israel flags, fucking they're, they're very much like patriotic. They'll close down the streets to march with their little bands and their flutes. There's bonfires everywhere. Like they are so in your face about it. Um, like if you're in the wrong estate, they will ask you like, you know, like they, they kind of sense that shit. They know. Um, but it's more the English and the Scottish and the Welsh, you know, like the actual people of Great Britain. Um, because people here think that they are British. We're not actually part of Britain. It's United Kingdom, mm. but, um, so they have like this, like forced sense of pride. Um, but it's like, I don't want to associate with any of them. So I don't want to be a part of this kingdom whatsoever. Ireland have enough problems. Ireland is just as shit as anywhere else. Why do you want it so badly? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's my thing. So just, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. stop and, shoving it down our throats, uh, you know. Uh, speaking of uh, Ireland being pretty shit nowadays, um, I wanted to get your opinions Indeed. on this. Um, I wanted to ask you this question first and then, you know, delve in a little bit more into it. Um, of course, sure. What is the most popular name in Ireland in 2024? In some cities, Muhammad. Um, but I would say it's most common 
James Michael fucking well, for say, actual I'll Irish names. You're wrong. Me. I'll say you're wrong because in the entirety okay. of Ireland, maybe for Irish people, Irish, you know, born and raised, it might be different. But in Ireland today, the most popular name throughout all of Ireland is Muhammad. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What is your thoughts on why? Why? Basically, why are all these dirty <laughs> scumbags uh, invading your country? And why is your government yep. allowing it? Uh, what do you think mm -hmm. the repercussions of all these, you know, disgusting scumbags uh, coming to your country are? Uh, basically, just give your entire thoughts on that. Fuck them all to death. Um, I have very different ideas on, like, capital punishment and, like, not even asking questions or, like, doing my own research. Just kind of, like, shoot first, ask later. You know, so I say, mm -hmm. if, if I see any... Armenian looking scumbag or some dirty Romo or like, you know, we, we are infested by Romos first and foremost, long before this uh, new immigration shit started. So like Romo gypsies, like uh, it's hard to actually describe what they are, but they're like rodent races, you know? Yeah. And they wear their fake Armani. They wash cars. They have massive groups of about 50 they, and they, they just, driveways. they just mean mug everyone. Yeah. They, they like, yeah. they pave driveways and everything. Yeah. Well, that's that's a gyp. That's an actual gypsy, like a traveler gypsy. Mm. Oh, but like the Romu gypsies oh, are like, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, God, those are like fucking a mix. They're like mutts. So, I say get rid of all them. If I see you wearing one of those jackets, or you've got like the traditional haircut that they have, um, any of them, just send them all back. And then, oh shit, he was actually a resident here. My bad. We'll get him back after. But first of all, we gotta like like Exodus purge this shit. Get rid of them first, mm. very, and then slowly uh, start bringing them in one by one. Very similar to uh, what El Salvador is uh, doing with all their prisoners and all the gangs and everything. You know, just arrest anyone that has any tattoos that relate to being in these gangs, and then if if yep. they do, you know, end up being not criminals, then we can uh, end up releasing them. But um, you yeah. need to just purge that evilness from your country first. Think about the morality. Uh, later, I do agree uh, with that situation in Ireland uh, specifically. Hundred um, percent. And speaking of that, right? Speaking of that, this kind of plays into it as well. Yeah. The state of Ireland, because as we just talked about, right? It's kind of been invaded by uh, immigrants. The uh, politicians are, are letting that happen. Obviously, I believe the the uh, market. Yeah. If I'm if I'm information correct, the Irish the uh, Irish market is uh, is going down at a maybe not an alarming rate, but you know two too fast for comfort what are your thoughts on just the the state of ireland today and is there anything specifically other than like uh, obviously your thoughts on immigration getting them all out is there anything specifically that you think could be done to help fix ireland no um so i think we're doomed <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, I think we're doomed. We'll, we'll never be back in our druid cloaks with cauldrons and shit, you know, we'll never be like bog scum animals like we're meant to be. Um, yeah, we all our entire lives we've been invaded and we've still managed to keep a flag standing for one. But even like you're talking about like the immigrants and stuff like that, like um, the state of Ireland, I think because of the stats of like Apple and all these massive corporations that have like companies in Ireland because of the tax, I think they change the statistics too much because. Most of Ireland is dumpy. Or, I'm sorry, hold on. Most of Belfast and Dublin are dumps. So, and then anywhere that isn't a dump is just big green valleys and hills. So, it's like, it's completely dog shit anyway. But if you go down to Dublin, it's completely overrun with, like, Indians, Turks, Muslims, like, everywhere. Um they're all waiting for the bus. There's like families of 15 just taking up the way. I'm a fast walker on the, on the sidewalk, as you call it. Getting, they're just, they're so slow and fat. They get all the benefits. The benefit system's out of order. Like people get so much money off the government for doing fucking nothing and sitting there with like undisclosed children, undisclosed wives that aren't supposed to live with them that they're getting all these like extra benefits for. So everyone in Ireland kind of just cheats the system and kind of just gets by. The only thing to see of Ireland would be like a climate shift. But as we all know, climate change is a myth. But if we got, you know, like 
say northern Spain vibes in Ireland. I think yeah, I think that would make like help it a lot. But oh, we're doomed. We're doomed. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's that's great news. I, th- I definitely. I was thinking. I was thinking of your answers or my answers while you're talking, but I think I covered everything. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one redeeming factor I do have to say for Ireland is statistically Irish women do have the biggest boobies. Um, and I think hey, that's a really big positive, you know, maybe you just, you know, go yeah, down but... to Ireland for like, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever, just, you know, you know, just potato max, you know, just, you know, pump some big fat fucking Irish boobies, you know, and everything. Hands you know, in the pockets type shit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hands in pockets. And I actually, you know what? For everyone watching this right now, it's a bit of an inside joke, hands in pockets type shit. I started that, by the way. I just want to say I started that because I'm an IRA uh, cell. I'm an IRA head. I love the IRA. Um, what does hands in pockets mean? What does that relate to? So it's said to be like uh, in Cork, which is like southwest Ireland. Um, there was a decree made where anyone, any Irishman with his hands in his pockets would be shot dead. Um so then people started like where like putting their hands in their pockets around like the monarch or like say like if the queen was visiting or whatever like people would say do it then don't shake hands with her put your hands in your pockets sort of thing um there's videos of killian murphy doing it you know but I, I was about it's to not say that, that common yeah, murphy. yeah yeah it's not that common um not a lot of people know about it but we do have our hands in our pockets i just don't think people really like do you know why asians have those like hooded eyes or whatever or like the Arabs eyes, have yeah. those, like, yeah, like Arabs, like with camels, like they have those, like, eye slits to protect them from sand. Mm. I think it's the same naturally over time, just kind of slinking those hands deeper in the pockets. You get me? Mm. And, and naturally over time, the, the Irish women get bigger boobies because, like, Ireland's such a shithole that, like, you need something, mm-hmm. right? You can't just have green fucking yeah. fields and fuck sheep. You need, like, chicks with big boobies and everything. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. It's, think about it like, it's kind of like a diesel metropolis without the cool skyscrapers and expensive infrastructure of like New York or something. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's just kind of like a steel mill. It, it feels like I'm living beside factories because that's what it was made for. Um, but yeah, everything's like a factory town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And um, I wanted to ask you this. I, I saw one of your videos that you posted. It's called are you smarter than an MMA YouTuber? And I actually, I watched most of it. I don't, I don't know if I finished the whole thing, but I, I watched most of, uh, most of it. I can't remember all the details because I watched it when it, when it first of came course out. Yes. But um, I think that's a fantastic idea, and you should keep on doing that. Can you explain uh, what that is, and if you know it's going to be a series or something? If you want to expand on anything upon that, if yes. you want to invite anyone, because I might make this a public video, if yes. you want to invite any MMA YouTubers to be on that, uh, just go right ahead. Hundred percent. So, I've said to a couple of people in my chat, um, if you make one live stream and and you're in the Rigiverse, like you can come on the show. I'm just obviously not going to give the spot to some name. That I've never met and just start handing them out my fucking say Discord or inviting them in. No, I, I gotta see your face and hear you talk once or twice. Um, but yeah, Rico is next, and then after that is Gnome. So we've got two very interesting ones coming up. That's a stacked um, lineup. Rico, stacked lineup. Exactly, bro. Two of the the biggest dogs. Um, apart from like Lucas Tracy, MMA Guru, all them ones. Like I don't want any of them. If Lucas Tracy asked to be on it, if any of them asked, yeah, but I'm not looking for those guys. I want to build our community up for what it is, the best. Like, what other MMA community is there? These YouTubers are out on their own islands. That's why Guru and Lucas are like the two big dogs at the table. They're kind of like, they have to be friends because they're the only two at the top. Mm-hmm. But our community is like the boys at the back of the class, you know, like banter and shit, yeah. That, but, um, that, that's perfect. That's perfect. And I was I was just talking about that um, on a uh, Lost Soul stream, I believe that our you know subgroup or it might have been better than me. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll ask about him later. <laughs> um, uh, I was saying that that our group, this niche of like Rigo, Eagle MMA, you know, Mogwonk, better. We are the counterculture of MMA YouTube, like Guru and Lucas Tracy. They're the general audience. They're just going to say whatever, you know, get some of the most views or whatever. You know, they, they just shit out videos, daily videos. And I said it before, like, if Guru took a month break, would he be able to come back with a video 
that's one of his biggest videos. You know, they wouldn't be able to because they have a, a general audience. We are the counterculture, and we have such a more dedicated community where we're so much more close knit. Um, I've made like three hundred fifty dollars already in like my first two and a half months or something, under a thousand subs, and that's solely because we have this you know niche counterculture <laughs> that's so different than anything else you'll find on MMA YouTube. Yeah. Um, and I think that's absolutely perfect. And that's why I'm doing this, too, because I want to bring to light more of these niche MMA YouTubers that are maybe just starting out and don't have as much of a following. But us, you know, in our live streams, know uh, who everyone is. But um, we'll get on to the next question, right? We talked about Lost Soul MMA. Um, I want you to give your general thoughts on Lost Soul MMA, and then I'll ask you a, a follow-up question after that. But just give me your general thoughts on uh, the character of Lost Soul MMA. Slug man. <laughs> he's a slug man and yeah no look i i jumped into his live stream whenever he first started going live because or whenever rego and you started shouting them out i never seen stomach it wasn't there for his antics um there was like three messages in chat and he read two of them bar mine so i was like i i don't really care it was just uh what's happening um and then someone was talking to him in chat and then he was arguing with rego and i could never see his name so I was like, right, okay, so this guy's blocked me so long ago when I was, like, typing in Rigo's chat. So something I said pissed him off to, like, block me because people, Manlet, for example, with the Colonel Gaddafi fucking uh, profile picture, mm -hmm. has literally threatened to, like, geolocate and, like, beat the shit out of him and, like, find and terminate him. And Lost Soul hasn't blocked that guy. So you think, what the fuck did Mogwonk say <laughs> to get under his skin? People have directly asked Lost Soul to address why he blocked me. He will never answer. He will never speak my name. I am Voldemort to that guy. That guy is terrified of me. And I shouldn't be. I'm not going to do anything. So as far as I'm concerned, as soon as he tells me why he blocked me, then it's done. Mm -hmm. Just tell me why. I don't care. Don't unblock me. I don't want to see any of your content. I'm glad because he's a slug. Mm -hmm. Mocked him. And uh, a quick little, quick little quip here. Um, what is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the word Armenian? Scum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It goes hand in hand, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and like I said earlier, I wanted to ask you a follow up question about Law Soulmate. He recently crashed out and had an absolute like psychotic schizo breakdown. Um, were you following that at all? No, um, I think it was mentioned. Someone said Lost Souls crashing out. It might have been you, but someone in Rico's chat yesterday, or Batter's chat yesterday, maybe. But I didn't see it. What happened? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, like, uh, you know, MMA Cucky or whatever uh, was like a mod and something got banned. And then UFO was also a mod under the name of Rigo. And then, you know, Mass, you know, timed out a bunch of people. And uh, Lost Soul just went on this crazy, you know, schizo. Oh, MMA Cucky is is uh, King Terzi, and King Terzi is Werewolf MMA. Uh, and literally just had a psychotic <laughs> breakdown on stream for thirty minutes straight. Uh, just give your just like a just a quick little uh, response to that. Just do you have any advice for him? All right, you know what? This is actually surprising if he's listening. I have the same fucking issue, and I don't even get trolled. I look at I look at somebody like I love Rigo. He's such a Chad heart. I'm like, uh huh. Is that is that not Rigo? No. And then these very suspiciously named alts come in the chat at Our suspicious times. Argay Kamrukian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Argay Kamrukian had a little problem with what I said about Armenians or Toydarians. Um, he said, I said they look like bug people. <laughs> I didn't disagree. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I look, some of them, I have no idea who people are. Some of them, I'm convinced it's like a Douglas Mamo alt or mm -hmm. like. There's one that speaks in like Arabic sometimes that I'm convinced is like a gnome, like a gnome alt, mm. you know. So there's some schizo shit in the community. I don't blame him, but I kind of need to go see this now. I need to see him actively uh, trying to witch hunt it's, alts. It, it's crazy, dude. He, he's like 30 minutes straight, just having a psychotic break. <laughs> but we'll move on to that, right? We'll we'll uh, we'll move on from that. Um, I have this 100%. written down. I have this question written down. I'm just gonna read it because. I mean, there's, there's there's really no other way to approach it. Um, this is what it says. It says, uh, do gingers have souls and should we condemn Ireland for bringing them into this world? No. 
I uh, yes. <laughs> they I, don't have um, souls, and we should condemn Ireland. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. I don't trust them. Oh, um, there's something about it, bro. Especially if you get someone like maybe Lucas Tracy can like sometimes pass off as brown, but he's literally an albino ginger, mm. and. Like that that's why at his core I can't trust that man. I would never let Lucas Tracy look after my children. Mm. I do not have kids, by the way. Mm. So when it comes to gingers, I kind of feel the same where it's like just I don't know, bro, just like have a normal hair colour, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. be just be normal. Mm. That's actually a new theory I've I've heard on Lucas Tracy. I'll buy no ginger. I'll definitely have to uh I will definitely have to look into that. Um I also wanted to ask you just a, a more general question, right? Because, you know, the people, they don't, really know, they don't really know the name of Mogwong Zerg Zerg. Obviously, all the cool kids know Mogwong Zerg Zerg, but all, the general audience does not know my boy Mogwong Zerg Zerg. So how did you get into this sport of MMA and of, of UFC? So I first started watching Bass Root and Fight Science. And um, I just remember watching all like the PSI force of like a liver shot and, and all. I was like, Okay, why would you ever fight? I do not want to take a punch directly to my liver without much force, blah, blah, blah. And then I started watching it more and more. And then getting into like, I didn't watch UFC at the time, but I played Undisputed 2009 a lot. So that was kind of like my first sort of like introduction. And then on the rise of Conor McGregor, I was front and center. I think the first full card start to finish I watched was UFC 194, McGregor Aldo. And from then, I don't think I've missed a single fight. So, um, yeah, that's where it started. Now, MMA YouTube-wise, I wanted to make a channel before Guru even started. And when Guru started, I was like, fuck, he's beat me to it. Yeah. And then I sat out for six fucking years or whatever the fuck it was and thought of all these video ideas. I started on TikTok, like, uh, making edits. And, like, Daniel Rod Rodriguez... Um, Dan at Battery, Drew Dober, and all have like, liked, reposted, blah, 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 and stuff. So I've got a few fighters that have actually posted some of my TikTok content. But I was like, no, you know what? I have too many ideas for this channel. I, I have like three channel ideas, <clears throat> three different channels in my mind that I want to like actually go with that are all MMA related. But I'm going to stick to this one first. And like basically too much content, too much creativity sitting by and watching certain things like um, when Regal made that like two hour esoteric lore I was like he has just taken any MMA Skyrim meme is now kind of Regal's mm -hmm. any Lord of the Rings kind of goes back to Regal you know now like any brain rot goes back to you <laughs> Yeah, my yeah. dogs are barking so, so I wanted so I just wanted to take traditional hats because I've been talking about it for a very long time and I heard a few people say oh he's wearing a, a funny conical hat and I was like, fucking don't give Rigo any ideas. I want to make this. And mm -hmm. it wasn't my best work, but it's just one of those things where it's like, I, I need to get this out there. I need to like put it into a drawing or a video and like post it. Mm -hmm. So I don't actually care about like the likes and shit. Um, but like, I just enjoy like having content that I've sat and worked on. And then I just watch my own content back and I laugh at my own jokes and shit. I feel like I've came on this like a very serious tone, but. I like the way I like this is going, but once batter yeah. shows up, you'll see a different <laughs> side of me. No, I I think this is perfect, dude. I actually I'm fair. I love to hear that, bro. I did. I never knew you had a TikTok. I never knew that you've been thinking about making a channel for six years. I think that's extremely interesting, and it shows that even more. Like you're a, you're a creative, and dude, you're you're fucking funny, dude. You're fucking funny. You make me fucking chuckle you, in, the, in the Instagram DMs and shit. So I absolutely think you should really go in, uh, all in on this because uh your uh traditional you. hats video was hilarious i think you made a star wars uh mma youtubers a, a star wars characters that was hilarious. how did you so, feel about your bot and uh, that what was it was uh jar jar right it was uh fuck. guy didn't watch my video jar jar no 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 which one was it uh, fuck, dude. what what was it you're kylo ren you're kylo ren kylo ren I don't know that. I, it's because I don't know Star Wars, bro. I haven't watched a single Star Wars movie ever, bro. That's why, because no one, no one watches that fucking the new Disney Star Wars, bro. When yeah, you fucking I've, disappeared on us, but I've, that was during your hiatus. A, yeah, I haven't watched a single Star Wars, so I, I don't know shit about that whole that whole genre. But it was still, I didn't know shit about that whole genre. Still found that video fucking funny. Um, 
let's get on just some uh, a little bit of UFC, right? We we uh, want to yes, end this with a little go. bit of UFC. As a Irish man, what are your thoughts on UFC Manchester? Let's just run through the main card real quick, um, if you want to. I'll pull it up right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll cut this up. My okay. thoughts are he's a yes, midget German steroid head. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to have you run through. It does. Oh, the, the card's not all fully. All right. I'll just have you do. All right. I'll run through him. But, uh. All right, so let's just run through uh, the main card of uh, UFC Manchester. Let's start off with the uh, the main event, Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad 2. What are your thoughts on this absolutely fucking abysmal main event? I cannot fucking wait for this fight. Okay, uh, no, no, shut the fuck up. Shut love. the fuck up. You're absolutely fucking capping right now. You're telling... Right, bro, we have... We're so close to having Bilal as champion. And I've already I've I've grown as a man. During the Usman period, I hated Usman and wanted him to die. But okay. I see things for what they are now. I'm long live <laughs> Bilal Muhammad and his reign. But realistically, Leon Edwards is far superior. I've never seen an angrier Leon in my life. Uh, a more aggressive bullying Leon than whenever he squared up against Bilal in the face offs and in their fight. It was a different sort of angst. I think Leon actually despises Bilal just because of his face and his attitude, obviously. But um, I think you're a fool to actually pick Bilal. But it's one of those things where come round three and we're all looking at each other like, wait, is Bilal Muhammad genuinely two rounds up right now? Like, and I can just hear Joe, Joe Rogan, John Anik, whatever, just yapping about it. Uh, that's Manchester, actually. It'll be different. But oh, it's Leon Edwards... Four or five or decision, he might get an early KO. Mm -hmm. I I basically agree with that that whole thing. I unfortunately think, you know, Bilal Muhammad just you know stylistically, it's very tough for him to get through Leon Edwards. Even though Leon Edwards is one of the most pathetic UFC champions in UFC history, uh, he's not British. He's not a British champion. He's a Jamaican champion. Um, agreed. Think, yeah, agreed. It'll be very tough for Bilal. And hey, I actually have also turned around Bilal Muhammad. I am just hoping and praying we get to see a Bilal Muhammad title run. Dude, just imagine the post-fight interview, bro. Just imagine the post-fight interview, bro. Yeah. Just, just yeah. talking shit on everybody. Everyone's just so fucking... Fuck, we get fucking Bilal as the champion. I mean, that just kind of shows how, yeah. how shit well through it is. But we'll move on to the uh, the co-main yeah. event. Um, I think even more pathetic than the main event. Um, the... Oh, yeah. Number one contender, Tom Aspinall, um, right, versus uh, Curtis Blades, the number four contender. What are your uh, general thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on people calling Tom Aspinall the real champ? So I'm sick of this Tom Aspinall would beat any Viking, any gladiator on his day. This There has never been a more combat-trained assassin in the world. Bro, he is not a combat-trained assassin. There are people in pubs in England that would probably do Tom Aspinall in just out of mentality. Mm -hmm. That man's a bitch. The guy's a pussy. Uh, he just annoys me and I'm sick of like I'm sick of like Ariel Hawani. I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but he, he wants to be like a British soccer hooligan in in those sort of terms. He wants to be like like a lad and he does his little hoorays for Tom, Tommy boy. They've got like these chants and they think he's got so much more aura than he actually does. I don't think Tom has any aura, mm -mm. and I would love Curtis Blades to put him out cold. I would love him to. I would love for Curtis Blades to beat him the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the that exact so same injury? I would funny, love that. Bro. Yeah, out for another two years, crying on the floor and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that'd be yeah. that, that'd be the, just the uh, the greatest fucking thing to happen. And I don't watch Ariel Hawani, but I do think he's an absolutely fucking disgusting little uh, rat. Uh, little side sidebar. Did you see his um his interview with Armin Saryukian and he goes uh I don't know it's like that fucking uh the Arab yeah, fucking Muslim, yeah. shit or whatever Muslim shit and Armin the whole time is yeah. like yeah <laughs> he just like fucking who the fuck is this aerial rat dude just clearly so done with him and he's like oh um my um he's... my mom was born in Lebanon and my my dad was a uh, Jerusalem <laughs> and or Egypt and he's like nice. <laughs> he's yeah. just like looking away the whole time just like i'm christian um 
Yeah. There's literally no one <laughs> more Weasley, no one more ratty, and he will he will he will do ratty and Weasley things mm. to get mm. called a weasel just for him to be like. And I know why you're using that word, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, call me a weasel. Like, oh, and he he <laughs> says it like I know what you really mean. What do you think people on the internet are scared to tell you that it's because you're Jewish? You think we'll, they're hiding that? We'll tell you right to your face, retard. Like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I need to cut. <laughs> I need to cut that out. I need to just cut the the you know the the one little segment there. <laughs> um, we'll get onto the uh, the uh, the feature fight. Uh, Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblet. I'm actually super hyped up for this fight. I think it's going to be an absolute scrap. Just give you your uh, quick thoughts on this. Um, I was heavy, heavy picking Bobby Green until my friend and I were talking about it. And then we said, is this one of those things where Patty's going to come in and randomly be four inches taller and two weight classes bigger? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Is he going to come in there and just mog, like frame mog Bobby Green, take him down so easily and sub him quicker than Makashev did? Mm. Or fucking he TKO by Makashev, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, taken that down was, and whooped quicker. That was actually my thoughts on that as well. Is this is a lot closer than than people are realizing it is. Like obviously, yeah, Bobby Green does have uh, superior boxing, but we've seen a steep decline in Bobby Green. He had a very tough fight with Jim Miller on the feet. Um, he's known to not have the greatest uh, defensive ground game, and Patty Pimblett on top of Tony Ferguson for basically three rounds straight. Um, he could strike with him, and he can take him down. This is a very competitive fight, and um, I'm actually very hyped for it. I've never been necessarily a Patty Pimblet lover or hater. I just think it's exciting to watch someone of some name value with some, you know, shit behind them, with some name value behind them, uh, get into some great fights. But we'll move on to the next one because we are uh, running low on time here. Uh, Muhammad Makai versus Nell Cap. Give your thoughts on that and just a quick, quick recap on your thoughts of uh, flyweight division in general. Um, I fucking love Manal Cap. I don't mind Makayev whatsoever. Um, his peak outs are some of the most satisfying things to watch. Like when he like ducks down and waits for you to commit, and then he dives in on the on the on the double leg. Like, but he like waits first. It's like a cobra, mm -hmm. kind of cool. Hope Manal Cap dusts him up, uppercuts, knees, combos, etc. Love flyweight. Um, I got Arseg fever right before his fight. I'm. I like to gear them back of. I fucking like Joshua Van, Tatsura Tyra. I love all of them. But Flyweight is genuinely one of my favorite divisions. And, and Charles Johnson. It's, and Charles Johnson Energy. Oh, Energy he's Johnson. Going, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, um, he's gonna, he's, you know he's gonna beat the black out of the Chinaman Joshua Van, right? He's, he's, gonna, he's actually gonna beat the black. Not, he's gonna beat the black out of that little Chinaman Joshua Van, and you're gonna watch uh, one of the most brutal beatdowns on UFC history. And we'll get on with the. Uh, the last fight of this main card, Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikadze. Uh, give your quick thoughts on that. Can I pick Giga Chikadze here? Yeah. It's Arnold Allen all day. Yeah. And I, I love Giga. It's one of those things. I uh, you can't pick him. You can't beat him to be pick him to beat Allen. Yeah, very, very inactive, very injury prone. Have had an extremely close fight with Alex Caceres, like on the feet. Um, and Arnold Allen, <laughs> as, as soy and as terrible as he is, did have a very competitive fight with Holloway and Mozart Evluev. Uh, Giga Chikaze is just not yep. on that level. And the inactivity and injuries are just absolutely uh, killing his career, I believe. But, um, hey, listen, Mogwonk, it's been around uh, 30 minutes, so I, do want, I don't want this episode to be too long. Uh, I think that was yeah, absolutely yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, I, didn't, I, have, I actually have one, one quick more question. Give literally like 30 seconds on uh, Ian Gary. Okay, so Ian Gary is like a little fucking... He's just a little queer <laughs> bitch boy faggot. <laughs> queer bitch boy faggot. Um, I'd slap him and his wife. If if Mogwonk was around at the time Leila Machado was fucking suing people, I'd be in a fucking cell, all right? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have a problem with James Gallagher... Um, Ian Ga or Ian Gary, they're not representing us properly. Um, Elliot Tapuria is the, is more like Conor McGregor than Ian McGarry, Ian Machado Gary, whatever the fuck his name is, will ever be. He doesn't even rep Ireland. He doesn't even wear green shorts. Um, he's fucking blonde hair, blue eyes, and he's living in Brazil. And his son doesn't speak a word of English or Irish. His name isn't even fucking Irish. Ian Gary. He's got two first names. There's nothing to like about that guy. 
Just because everyone hates him doesn't mean I'm going to jump off the bandwagon. I'm a fucking hater to my core. Okay, well, I'll just say all of that was slander. All of that was uh, pretty slanderous. But hey, 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 let's move on from that, right? Let's move on to that. That's going to have to wrap it up for your segment of the Eagles Nest podcast. Absolutely fantastic. And we will get into the better MMA segment. And then right after that, we will get the competition. Let's go. Let's go. Good morning, good evening, night, Eagle MMA family. It is now the better MMA segment. Better MMA, how we doing? I'm doing good, Eagle. I'm, I had a great time just now with uh, you and Mogwonk with our little competition. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling great, um, you know, as of right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this uh, segment. Mm. Um, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get right into this. Let's get, just, let's just jump right fucking into it, okay? What are your thoughts on the Qing Dynasty? <laughs> what are, I'm sorry. Um, the and Qing Qing's Dynasty. being spelled, Qing being spelled what? Q-I-N-G? Q-I-N-G, the Qing Dynasty. Um, well, one of the, uh, greatest dynasties uh, that has ever faced the earth, really. Uh, the terracotta soldiers are still uh, preserved and taken all around the world and put on display uh, for their magnificent uh, artistry. And I mean, it was a, it was a pretty intense time there in China, um, but I'll say it was very it was very Chinese time. Mm. You know, it was a very very Chinese time before a lot of you know, fighting powers. We had a very uh, resounding dynasty at one point in time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And and since we're talking about the Qing dynasty, what are your thoughts on the Duck dynasty? I actually was, uh, I actually uh, think Duck dynasty is pretty cool, actually. You know, I think it's Mm -hmm. a pretty good show. I think it's a show about uh, family values at the end of the day and not just duck hunting and people they sell like what duck calls or something like that or they sell like duck collars or i I believe so i believe so are you you're not a fan of the show uh i used to watch it when i was uh, a fucking retard and i was under the age of seven okay uh yeah used to be a fan stop being a fan uh but hey, hey hey let's just move on right let's just move on uh, so you're a Chinaman, right? You're a Chinaman. How like good are you percentage wise? Like how, how much of you is Chinese and how much of you is like regular? <laughs> if you just want to, um, just give a uh, rough estimate. <clears throat> just give like a rough estimate. Oh, man. Oh. No, I'm uh, I'm like to uh, answer your question. I'm about like seventy five percent regular, seventy five percent regular, and twenty five percent Chinese. Okay, great. So you're like mostly a good person, I guess. Um, have you ever had fortune cookies? Yeah, I've I've had uh, I've had uh, fortune cookies a couple times after eating Chinese takeout. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're really good, aren't they? They're very good. Mm. Have you ever had uh, congealed pig's blood? Is that a yes? or? Uh, or... (laughs) Uh, Uh, Probably, but uh, I can't remember it, honestly. So... I don't think so, but it was probably in some like Chinese food that I was that I was eating, you know, like, you know, at some takeout or something like that. But I'm I'm gonna say no. I haven't done it consciously. I haven't ordered it. Um, mm. So if, if I have, I I didn't do it knowingly. I guess you could say. Mm. Mm. But if I was a betting man, I would say I probably did. Okay. 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 Um. <clears throat> so you are a Chinaman, right? You are a Chinaman. There's a very uh, there's a very controversial topic. Is Taiwan a country? 
Um, myself, personally, I'm not Taiwanese. Um, I feel like if you ask somebody from Taiwan, they would say that Taiwan is their own country with independence. They were the last stand uh, for the for democracy uh, with Chiang Kai-shek uh, in China. So they're the last stand for democracy. And I would say democracy in spirit uh, speaks to the voice of the people and the people will tell you that uh, Taiwan is a country. But uh, the CCP would say otherwise and China's officials would say otherwise. Mm. Um, but again, cool. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I also, uh, I wanted to ask you another question. Um, there's been some other recent controversy of a certain MMA YouTuber named MMA Plug, and he just recently brought this to my attention. He's, he said to me that you have been ducking him. Do you even know who MMA Plug is? Can you explain this a little bit? Um, MMA Plug I is a uh, up-and-coming streamer on uh, MMA YouTube, from what I've heard. Uh, I think I might have stopped in one of his chats once or twice. It was hard to distinguish, you know, who was the human that was speaking because there are so many cats in the room at the same time. Um, so I was very confused. So I don't know by ducking they mean the fur balls or, or what have you, but um, I duck no fade. Mm -hmm. um, why do black people love beating up elderly Asians? Just, um, give I'm like sorry, a, could you repeat the question? <clears throat> why could you repeat do, the question? I missed it. Why do black people love beating up elderly Asians? Just like a guess, like just guess or, or something. <laughs> um, no, no, I think, um, I don't know, maybe they didn't get enough um reparations maybe they didn't get enough uh welfare or something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and then speaking of uh black people and asians why i mean it's so crazy to even think about it why are like 50 percent of black dudes absolutely obsessed with anime what what is your thought process on that oh um well, I mean, by anime, you would mean specifically the uh, the the power level based animes, being Dragon Ball Z yeah, and like Naruto, Naruto yeah. which is it's essentially equivalent to the black to the black Israelites within the black community. You know, it's like its own sect of religion uh, in a sense. Um, you know, the Naruto and the DBZ enjoyers. But um, what, what makes them so uh, attracted to it? I would say mainly because uh, the drawings are awesome and the drawings are cool. And, uh, you know, they, they scream loud, too. A lot of fighting and everything. Kind of just embodies the black spirit. Really, really loud and a lot of fighting. Uh, you would agree, right? You know, there was a gentleman... Uh, from New York one time who would go around to Supreme stores wearing bathing ape and he would say fuck Supreme banging on my chest and I think he really enjoyed Dragon Ball Z mm. Mm. yeah right it just yeah exactly exactly um I wanted to ask you a another question um I've you know obviously we all know uh I took a month break where I was hooligan maxing and hoodlum maxing and I I blame 100 I put 100% of the blame on you better MMA for smoking cigarettes uh inside. Can you explain why you would smoke cigarettes inside and why, you know, just just why? Why would you smoke cigarettes inside? Nah, 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 nah. What? Bruh. Bruh. You're such a bad influence, dude. I'll answer such your question influence. with a question. Mm -hmm. I'll answer your question with a question, mm. Eagle MMA. What is that flag behind you? It's the goddamn American flag is what it is. And what country do I live in? 
the fucking United the freest States country of on earth. America. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And hey, that's actually a that's a fucking fantastic response, right? So I also wanted to ask you this question, right? You are obviously a Chinaman, right? I think I've I've said that enough now. People are, are understanding it. You are a Chinaman. Right? You are a Chinaman. Um what what is the like main what made you want to move to America? What made you want to move to America? Um, I think I think what made my uh, Chinese family move to America was communism. Mm. And um, we've been cooling since mm. in America. We've been cooling. Mm. Um, and speaking of, you know, that, uh, let's get a more general question, right? A lot of these are, you know, silly, goofy questions. I want a more serious uh, general question. You can go uh, in depth in this. Um, how did you get into the sport of MMA, of UFC, and how did you get into this sphere of MMA YouTube specifically? Okay, well, I was first, to make a, a long story short, I was introduced to the UFC when I was watching some form of like the spike prelims in the 2000s era. I could remember vividly that they were promoting a Brock Lesnar fight. Uh, it was post Brock Lesnar beating Frank Mir. I can remember it was around that time. That's when I discovered UFC. Um, and then I became a casual fan around the McGregor era, became a huge fan of Yoel Romero after I saw him knock out Chris Weidman, uh, became a more hardcore fan around the uh, Max Holloway era of featherweight. And since then, I've been following the UFC quite closely. Um, discovered the MMA guru about, you know, a year, year or two ago. Uh, from that, I discovered Rigo's channel. And I've pretty much been following, like, Rigo's channel since the beginning. Uh, I've seen your channel pop up as a result of it. And uh, so many other MMA channels popping up. And, you know, for somebody who likes the sport so much and likes to talk about it so much, this is a pretty good outlet uh, just to uh, put that energy in, in a productive way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you said you were a very big fan of uh, Yoel Romero, right? Um, I wanted to ask you, what are your top three knockouts just off the top of your head? Top three knockouts off the top of my head? That's really... It's a really hard question, yeah, I, but I, since I, I brought it up, I mean, I got to put, I got to put Yoel Romero, flying knee, Chris Weidman, probably the best timed and set up flying knee we may have ever seen in the UFC. But you see a lot of flying knees up against the fence. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do you see flying knees in the center of the cage in the open mat. Just saying. Um, other than that, thinking about great knockouts. Uh, do you mind if I if I look at like my fight pass real Absolutely. quick? Absolutely. Do you go, mind? Go, uh, take a look ahead. Because I don't want to give you some like rushed bad answers. Mm -hmm. You should look at uh, Demir um, Hadzovic uh, versus Marchin Held. That's a fucking crazy one. Oh, Nate Marquardt versus Tyron Woodley. That's strike force, but could I use yeah, that? Absolutely. Nate absolutely. Marquardt. I mean, not a one-punch knockout, but probably one of the most devastating, violent knockouts that we've ever seen in the UFC. Nate Marquardt versus Tyron Woodley. And then for my third one, I'm going to go with... Oh, I'm so biased. I'm so biased, bro. You know what? I'm going to say this is Frankie Edgar versus Greener Day. It's a great, it's a great knockout but mainly for the absolute hell that Frankie Edgar had to endure in the second and the third fight especially. I mean, the fact that that dude took all of that damage and he came back to knock out Gray Maynard, what, I mean, it's like one of the few stories in MMA that could actually make you emotional for how inspiring it is. True Rocky moment. Uh, Frankie Edgar is a legend and an inspiration for for uh, knocking out Gray Maynard the way that he did, man. I absolutely love Frankie Edgar. He's one of the main reasons I am I love this sport. It's because of specifically his trilogy with Gray Maynard. Some of the greatest fights you will ever see. You know, first first fight got, you know, TKO'd or whatever. Second fight, a draw. Third fight, 
every single fight, he just gets his shit kicked in and then somehow comes back and, and knocks out Gray Maynard. Absolutely uh, fantastic, fantastic response there. Uh, and speaking of fights, we just had... I mean, what are the... I mean, listen, I understand if you enjoyed it, but... On paper, I thought this was the dumbest fucking thing ever. Uh, Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal 2 in boxing. They just boxed this Saturday. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think Nate Diaz should have won the decision? You know, I was watching the fight live. I was watching it quite closely. And this was noted by Sean Porter and essentially by everybody on the commentary team that this fight was going to be determined by what the judges were favoring that night, whether it be the volume punches of Nate Diaz or the power punches of Jorge Masvidal. Now, I think everybody could agree who watched the fight that Jorge Masvidal landed the harder shots throughout the fight, and he tended to do that quite consistently throughout the majority of the fight, uh, including the mid and late rounds. But Nate Diaz walks through with that iron chin, and lays on him with these, you know, sh soft shots around the guard and to the body. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it looks good to the judges because Nate is putting in that extra volume and effort. At the same time, he is cracking through with a clean one-two every, every now and then. So people cannot ignore the fact that Nate was also landing uh, more than a few solid shots in his own right in between all of those setup punches. Um, so I do think Nate Diaz got a rightful decision. Me personally, I thought it should have been 5-5, a draw. I felt like it should have been a 5-5, a draw. Um, but I can see why the judges would favor the, mo the, favor the volume of Nate and uh, give him the decision. And one thing that people forget too is boxing scoring is not MMA scoring. If this was MMA scoring, I think it's a pretty clear decision to Jorge Masvidal, but it's not. Boxing is a completely different sport. They scored a completely uh, different way. They take aggression and defense a lot more into account. So, listen, I didn't even watch the fight, didn't even watch the highlights. Um, what the Sigma? Uh, go ahead. Now, I just wanted to add, I mean, to your point, they, they really great defense, and also they take into consideration footwork and seeing some more mature boxing instincts and one of the, the biggest mistakes that Jorge Masvidal would do is even after he would let go with a hard shot or two he would then take a break and stand right in front of Nate Diaz and in a boxing ring they would much rather see you or your combination than get back on your bicycle and retake the center of the octagon and use your footwork. Nate Diaz was pressuring and essentially moving Jorge around the ring much more than we saw Jorge moving Nate around the ring. So I think that visual, especially when you're seeing it live, Nate pressing, uh, convinces the judges um, of that. But mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, and it says we're speaking about fights, right? This month is the month of July. And holy moly guacamole, rig a penis, um, is this month abysmal. <laughs> This this month, I think, is one of the worst months for fighting in the history of ever, except for one fight. One fight specifically, I think, caught both of our eyes. It's Charles Energy Johnson, the pride of St. Louis, hashtag Skullet Gang, versus the Chinaman Joshua Van. Now, you've been very open and honest about your, your thoughts on this, so uh, go right ahead. Explain uh, to the fans this fight and what you think is going to happen. Well, Charles Johnson versus Joshua Van, the Burmese Myanmar fighter who currently lives in Houston with Myanmar genetics, Joshua Van. He is a very young fighter. I believe he's 22 years old, whereas Charles Johnson is 33 years old. Charles Johnson has had his fair share of losses in the UFC. I believe it is three now, but he's currently on a two fight win streak last fight. Uh, he had a very good decision against Jake Hadley, where he got a flash, a flash knockdown on Jake Hadley and really nullified all of the aggression of Jake Hadley and had a very clean decision, veteran performance. 
I very much like Charles Johnson. I think many of us compare him to Bobby Green's sort of style at flyweight because he's comfortable moving forward and especially moving on his back foot, rolling punches and throwing counters. Joshua Van's style will play very well into this because Joshua Van is sort of like a Myanmar Peter Yan in a sense, where he'll walk you down with a high guard and he'll really let, he really look to throw uh, heavy combinations and heavy punches. Now, this is you know a blessing and a curse for Joshua Van because when those punches land and they can melt his opponents, it looks great and it can really work the momentum for him. But if he can get caught by somebody very fast and quick like Charles Johnson, when he's open, going for those big shots. We could see Charles Johnson uh, flash knocking down Joshua Van, but uh, Joshua Van is a very young, gritty fighter, and I think he will be able to put the hands on and be much more aggressive than Jake Hadley was. Hmm. Well, obviously, obviously, I think we all know that Charles Johnson is, is, is just going to run through Joshua Van, but we'll, we'll move on, right? Uh, we all know you just you know spout a load of shit because Joshua Van has no chance against Charles Johnson. Um, but like I was saying earlier, right, the the UFC of July. What are your thoughts on this? Next week, obviously, or this Saturday, technically, we have Rose Namajunas versus Tracy Cortez. Now, obviously, there's only one reason to watch that fight. What do you think that one reason is? Uh, Tracy Cortez. Yeah, just just yes. st staring at her, staring at her bunda. While she's a uh, single collar clinch, um, but what are your thoughts on? No, I will not be watching that. Yeah, I, I, I will just. Uh, hey, as soon as they start striking, you know, t looking at, the ch looking at the chat, they start clinching up. I'm, I'm all eyes. I'm fucking, you know, dopamine receptors are on. But uh, what are your thoughts? And then, then the week after is, I don't even know the main event of the week after. It's like Yuranda Genderoba, the chick with the fucking cross eyes. Versus some other random fucking person who I don't know. I don't even know uh, who they are. But obviously you've spoken your love for uh, your... Whatever. Something Jandaroba. And there is also UFC Manchester. What are your thoughts on the UFC of July? And also just, you know, your thoughts on Jandaroba as well. Um. Well, my girl being a Jandaroba... Always rooting for her, always rooting for my girl, Verna. Um, she's the real reason why we watch WMMA. I mean, you guys know me. I was just joking about Tracy Cortez, but I don't watch WMMA. At Better MMA, I don't waste my time with that low-quality content unless it's my baby girl, Jandaroba, all right? I take my relationship with Verna Jandaroba very seriously. Uh, one day, I hope I could get a press credential to... Uh, Ask her very politely out on a uh, nice date or a soiree. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and little I love you in a dinner robe. Little sidebar: what What would you? What would you? What would the date be? What What would your first date with Verna Jandaroba? Is it Verna Jandaroba? With me and Jandaroba? Yeah. Well, I mean, first, first dates, um, mini golf, uh, team dodgeball tournament. Can, can she? Um, can she play mini golf? Is she just gonna hit the fuck? How is she gonna hit it in the fucking? Bro, she's cocked. Bro, I don't think the death perception is there, bro. I don't. I don't know if she's gonna um, be able to hit the. Be able to hit the. We could do ball. axe. We could do. We could do. We could do axe throwing. You know, it's a. It's a hot thing for dates. You know. Mm -hmm. Go. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like I said, uh, as well, what are your thoughts on the overall UFC of July? Is it really as bad as people are saying? Are there some hidden gems? Obviously, we know about Charles Johnson versus Joshua Van. What are your thoughts on this month for UFC fights? Um, we are pretty scarce for any sort of ranked competition that is going to be affecting the contender or title picture in a lot of these fights. We have the flyweight matchup, like you mentioned. Uh, if I could take a look here at the schedule, most we're we're really looking forward to UFC 304, right? We're all looking forward to UFC 304, where we could see uh, Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad, and so so many others on that UFC 304 card, like Arnold Allen, uh, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades, and of course Patty Pimblett versus Bobby Green. And Mohamed Makaya versus Manel Cap as well. Uh, as for the, um, 
but I mean, there's a lot of fights to look forward to on uh, 304. Yeah, a lot of fights to look forward to there. Hmm. And I was uh, I was talking to Mogwonk earlier because I ran through UFC Manchester with him. Uh, Patty Pimblett versus Bobby Green. We were discussing how that fight is actually very close and very competitive. If you if you genuinely really take the time to think about that, Bobby Green is getting older. He did not. He had. A, he just had a war with Jim Miller on the feet. That doesn't really look good. And you know, Patty Pimblett came in injured and was really kind of just dominating uh, Tony Ferguson. Uh, Mogwonk said uh, this point specifically of. What if Paddy Pimblett just looks 20 pounds bigger and he's just like five inches taller than Bobby Green? Uh, what are your thoughts on that fight specifically? Do you believe Paddy Pimblett is just this, you know, fluke fighter? You know, yeah, he you barely got through Jared Gordon, Tony Ferguson, whatever. He's not going to get another win. Or do you believe he's going to beat Bobby Green? And if you do, how far do you think Paddy Pimblett goes? Well, I am favoring Patty Pimblett in this matchup. He's going to have a lot of good energy, being that it's in his hometown crowd. And the thing about Patty Pimblett that is very different from Jim Miller, who got pieced up by Bobby Green, and also Nasrat Hackrass, who got pieced up by Bobby Green, those guys are very plotty, as some may say, and... They walk very slowly in your boxing range, and they're very comfortable with sitting in the pocket like that. Paddy Pimblett, he's much more explosive when he tries to close the distance. And I think uh, in the past where we've seen Jalen Turner, who does have more power than Paddy Pimblett, we've seen Bobby Green get rocked and wobbled. Even at times in the Jim Miller fight, there were some shots that would crack Bobby Green, and it would get the crowd thinking for a second, whoa, you know, does Bobby really have this under control? Um, and that's in a dominant Bobby Green performance. I think a younger, athletic fighter like Patty Pimblett is going to be throwing some dangerous hooks and perhaps some kicks on the feet. And more importantly, I think he's going to be a savage and outwork Bobby Green on the ground and probably go home with his neck. Mm. And that, that's what we were talking about earlier is he can just, you know, he has the skill. Jordan Levitt is no slouch on the ground. He is a grappler. Um, Patty Pimblett could easily just lay on top of Bobby Green for three rounds straight and just outwork him. I completely agree with you. Um, uh, uh, I just had a stroke. What was I going to fucking say? Oh my God. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I literally had a stroke right there. Um, you mentioned Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green. I just want to get your thoughts real quick. Some people were saying that was a, a, a late stoppage and oh, you know, uh, it was dangerous for Bobby Green. Do you agree that that was arguably an early stoppage? And what are your thoughts on stoppages today in the UFC? Do you think they tend to be ended a lot earlier, a little too premature? I would say that they tend to be ended. Uh, UFC stoppages today, they, the fights get stopped sooner, most certainly uh, faster than they have in the past. Um when it comes to Jalen Green, or excuse me, Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green, I, I mean, do they think all look alike, right? that they're... Get, keep going. <clears throat> um, so I, I have a very simple take on UFC stoppages, and it sort of goes like this. Imagine that you are a waiter at a restaurant. Think of the person getting knocked out as the person having something to eat. So they sit down, right? They're put on the ground. Now it's time to eat. Eat what? Follow-up shots. So Jalen Turner was feeding Bobby Green some follow-up shots. As, you're, as the waiter at the table... It is your job to recognize when the customer, in this case, is done eating, uh, when they're incapacitated and they cannot defend themselves anymore. Um, and there's no chance of them coming back into this fight. So there were a few shots that Bobby Green ate uh, that, you know, probably uh, weren't... They, the referee could have stepped in a little bit sooner, 
but I'm not complaining about it. I'm much more upset over early stoppages than I am late stoppages because at the end of the day, this is what these guys get paid to go in there and risk to do, right? It's like, this is what they get paid for. They know every time they step in there, they could get that or much worse. Bobby Green would much rather have that happen to him than for Jalen Turner to power bomb him on his head and for him to snap his neck and, you know, be paralyzed for the rest of his life because that has happened in MMA as well. You know, people have been paralyzed and, you know, much horrible things have happened in MMA, mm. uh, worse than a bad knockout. Uh, yeah, that, that one Russian dude from the first UFC, obviously, you know, very famously, I gouged his opponent blind and still lost the fight, which is hilarious. Uh, but exactly right. I mean, it's it's non-fighters. It's a bunch of nerds who are basically trying to white knight for these fighters going like, no, we don't want them to take as much damage. You know, the like these fighters, they every single time they fight, they sign a contract that says, I cannot take any legal action if I die. I know there is a chance that I die in this ring, in this octagon, and I am taking that chance. These fighters will do absolutely everything. There have been countless amount of times, I mean... Just count how many... Tw Jared Cannonier versus uh, Nazardine Imovov, right? V very uh, recent early stoppage. You know, Jared Cannonier talks about he's broke. He needs to fight. I don't think he cares if he takes 10 more follow-up shots. If it, you know, if there's the prospect of I can still come back into this fight and still win. Because they need that money. If you really care about the UFC fighters, let them take these follow-up shots. Because, I mean, dude... You know, Pat Barry versus a Czech Congo. You know, Joe Rogan screaming, oh, he's out, he's out, he's out three times in a row. Czech Congo stands up, boom, one shot, knocks out Pat Barry. It happens constantly, and you, MMA fans need to remember that, that this sport can literally change at the drop of a hat, bro. Look at fucking, bro, there's so many examples. There's so many examples. I don't want to keep rambling on, but if you really care about the UFC fighters, let them take these follow-up shots because they're willing to take them. They will take that for the prospect of I can make twice as much money and not fucking have to go ask mom, uh, hey, I need 12 grand to pay my bills because I didn't win my fight, right? Very true, very true. Mm -hmm. But listen, hey, hey, that's going to have to wrap it up for your segment right we got a nice uh, roughly 30 minutes in there right 29 minutes or something um at the end of every single one of these i ask better mma do you have any questions for me uh yeah uh, i do have a question for you eagle mm -hmm. um millie or rigo millie and, and for and let me just say this let me just say this Millie, because I know I can take advantage of him, and I know that I know that if he ever tried to run away, uh, he has post-traumatic stress disorder from already being being kidnapped uh, as a child. So I could I could very easily manipulate him into uh, uh, wanting to come back to me, rather than you know if Re if it was Rigo, I would have to go out and, and capture him, and he's you know a public figure, and like when am I going to have him in, in my attic or something? It's going to be a change of scenery. People are going to notice. Uh, so Millie, because I would have a lot more control over him, and I could manipulate his uh, his mind, basically. Mm. Okay, is that, is that a good answer? Um, I also have another question for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, great answer, dude. Great answer. Mm. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, honest answer. It felt like mm. that's all I was looking for. Um, did did Baby Gronk li riz up uh, Libby Dunn? Here's the thing about Baby Gronk it, is people are not even talking about Big Justice or um. Sigma Rit. Like, they're not even talking about... Bi what happened to Big Justice? Okay, what happened to Big Justice? What happened to the Sigma Riz guy? Uh, I, right? I actually... I was actually going to ask you, though. Uh, but the, the Rizzler. The Rizzler! I mean, like, how does he the fit Rizzler, into the picture? The Rizzler! Right? We're talking about Baby Gronk rizzing up Livy Don. What about Big Justice and the Rizzler? First of all, I don't think anyone should be shipping them. They're, they're children. But, um... They are a dynamic duo. I would 10 times rather watch uh, Big Justice and the Rizzler run football drills than watch little baby Gronk. Um, I hugged Livy. You're a fucking dork. You hugged Livy. Hey, 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 baby Gronk, baby Gronk. You can say you start, hey, you can say you raised up Livy Dunn when you start uh, impregnating her and she's having your children. Hugs mean nothing, you little twerp. Does that answer suffice? Does that answer suffice? 
yes, yes, that does answer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my question suffice it, yeah. All right, all right, well, listen, better listen. That's going to be the end of this segment. And obviously, right after this, we're going to get into the competition between you and Mogwunk. So if you want to plug anything, plug it real quick. You guys already know where you can find me, man. You already know where to find me. Mm. S -s that's that's actually damn. That's actually cold. No, 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 no. I'm not even gonna lie. That's actually cold. Not even plugging anything. Just saying, you already know where to find me, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. That was actually cold. But hey, listen, we're gonna get right into the segment of Mugwunk versus Better. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you there. Good morning, good evening, good night, Ego yeah. May family. We are here with the competition Mugwunk versus better so we're going to get right into this the first segment will be me asking a, a bunch of general you know questions where uh you know it's going to be about this it's going to be about that a bunch of random shit we'll get into uh after that they will have some pre-made questions scenarios and uh art pieces that i had um given them before to show for this competition and at the very end of it will be a special surprise and the rules of this, obviously, this will be run by the comments. You in the comments, you guys in the comments will determine who the winner is. Obviously, I'm going to have my, you know, pick of the winner. But it will be determined by you in the comments. So make sure you like the comment uh, of Mogwonk or of Better MMA for who you think is the better MMA YouTuber and better prospect. Better MMA will start right now. With the first question, <laughs> Mogwonk, make sure you're ready. Okay, Mogwonk better, make sure you guys are ready. We're going to start off with the first question. It's going to be the hardest question you guys are ever going to be asked. What is Eagle MMA's favorite color? Green. Mm -hmm. Better? I'm going to go with blue. Mm. You two are both wrong. But I'll side with better on that one because my favorite color is obviously red, white, and blue for the American flag. Um, but hey, we'll get into the next. We'll get into the next question, right? We'll get into the next question. Who is the real? Who has red and blue in it, by the way? But um, I'll take I'll take the point anyways. It's too late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who is the real UFC heavyweight champion? Starting with better. The real UFC heavyweight champion, mm -hmm. the real UFC heavyweight champion mm -hmm. is Johnny Bones Jones, mm -hmm. who defeated Cyril Gaon mm -hmm. in one minute. Mm -hmm. okay. Mogwonk? John Jones. Mm. Yeah, you guys are both correct. Yeah, you, you guys are both correct. That was an easy one. Throw you guys an easy one. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll, we'll get another easy one right here. We'll, we'll give you guys another easy one. Uh, what is the circumference of the sun? Two hundred ninety-five million uh things of the moon. So whatever that is, the moon uh, okay. diameter two hundred ninety-five million times. That's my final answer. Okay, uh, Mogwonk. The exact same as the moon. Okay, that's gonna go to better. It is two point seven two zero nine eight four million miles. Better had the word million in his. Obviously, Mogwonk, you uh. Very low effort, Mogwonk. You know, I was actually, I was actually, I was thinking Mogwonk was gonna come in here guns blazing. By the way, he was um, chatting shit at you. Better, just want to let you know, he was chatting a lot of shit in, in yeah. the DMs. He was saying he's going to SA and unalive you, and he said you were gonna need a participation medal. Just reminding you of that. And uh, he's coming out really slow and um, really um, unenthusiastic. So hey, we'll we'll see what happens in the uh, the rest of this contest. But um, uh, next question. Okay, this is this is an easy one. What did I have for breakfast today? Better? You had oatmeal. You had oatmeal. And you had two, two fried eggs. You had two fucking fried eggs and you fingered those bitches. Uh, you okay. fingered those. Okay, don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark Wonk. Well, I was originally thinking you had some fried bacon. Oh, I'm going to say bacon and eggs, toast. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. Okay, you guys are... I'll give you guys both a half point, right? Eggs and biscuits. Eggs and biscuits. Um, but that was that was a, that was an easy one. That was an easy one. We're gonna do the next one. Um, this this should you guys. I'll be I'll be so disappointed, and I might honestly cry on this podcast if, if um neither of you get this right. What is my dog's name? Toby. Toby. 
Okay, you guys both caught that. You guys both got that instantly, dude. I'm. <laughs> I'm so this happy. This is rigged. No, 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 no. Okay, wait, wait, wait. we'll get into the next one. We'll get into the next one. Okay, we'll get into the next one. Okay, a little bit harder. Okay, this will be a teensy tiny bit harder. What are your opinions? This is a, this is a short, like a, a um a phrase, right? It'll be a, like a short answer. What are your opinions on the socioeconomic effect of BRICS? Uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Um, what w opinions on the socioeconomic effect of BRICS has on the United States, specifically BRICS trying to convince the Middle East to use Chinese currency when trading? I will start with Mogwonk. My opinions on BRICS when it comes to the U.S.? A a and specifically um, trying to convince the Middle East to use Chinese currency while trading. Well... It sounds like all of that's a gravel at the end of the day. It's all bullshit. There's no need for any of it. Um, these people are not in charge of their countries. It is literally like a sandbox that they play with. So if they want to fucking give some dumbass Chinese yin or whatever the fuck it's called to Saudi Arabia, then go ahead. I don't fucking care. You know what I mean? So I actually I approve of a lot of it, you know? Okay, okay. Better? Um. Well, the... Uh... We have the United States dollar, and there's also the United States petrol dollar. Um, so mm. oil is typically traded with, under United States currency. So when you have BRICS look you other sort of currencies for oil and petrol trade, it can put into concern how valuable or how good the United States is at essentially fulfilling their debts and uh, you know, fulfilling the use of the United States petrol dollar and showing that there is strength between the United States dollar. So it's not good when you have BRICS, as you say, uh, looking toward other countries' currencies as a more stable way to trade petrol and oil. Um, so when you're when you're seeing it, um, it's not a good sign for the United States uh, when you have those countries looking for other currencies. I could not have said that better. That was like a way better explanation than I've ever heard. Um, that's obviously going to go to better. That is easily going to better. I mean, that was a fantastic explanation. Um, <laughs> now, now, now we'll, this one might be a little, I, I don't know. I'll ask this one, but this is not like a, this question is a little biased. This question is a little biased, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If, if it's, you know, I'll just get into it. What happened in the year 1776? Mogwonk. Or sorry, we'll start with better. Start with that. Right. American Revolution. Whatever. <laughs> Sorry, what, sorry, what was the question? Could you, re could you repeat the what question? What happened in 1776? America happened, baby. We pulled up. We showed up and we conquered. All right, we said, Britain, we got muskets, baby. You're getting your asses out of here. You're done, so. You're done, son. You shed blood for this land, boy. Mm -hmm. And we stand well, well, we did. We, we did. You did. Business. Yeah, we did. You did. You're Asian. I was going to say, um, what is all Chinaman. this talk? You're not an American. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a Chinaman. Um... Mog, and obviously, Mogwonk said the exact same things. We'll get into the next one, right? Obviously, you're a Chinaman, so you have no idea what happened. And so you, you have no idea. You, it's not us. It's it's uh, me, not you. Uh, better MMA. You're, you're Chinese. Um, where do babies come from? Storks. Where do babies come from? Start with Mogwonk. Yeah, yeah. Take Storks. Turns. Drop them down in little blankets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better? Uh, to quote my man, Titi, from making Whoopi. Um, well, that's, I mean, just straight up false. Mo that is going to Mogwonk. Uh, uh, a stork comes in. Yes. <laughs> okay, gang. You got any more globalist fucking questions, huh? Um, a stork. A stork comes in <laughs> and drops them off. Okay, okay. Next question. What does GRAPE stand for? The acronym GRAPE. Better. You said an acronym? Yes, GRAPE. G-R-A-P-E. G -R -A -P -E. What does that stand for? Greatness, responsibility, excellence, 
acceleration, uh, tenacity. Or no, that's that's great. Um, <laughs> What okay. The fuck okay. Is going All on? right. There. Mogwan. Mogwan. Move on to Mogwan. <laughs> what does grape stand for? Rip. <clears throat> Annihilate. Penal ejaculation. Perfect, perfect. I think that's um a very split one, right? I think tenacity, tenacity really. I think made that a I tie. I spelled it right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, right, I, I think that's a tie. That one's a tie. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a tie. That one's a tie. Hey, hey. Um, <clears throat> we'll get on to the uh, we'll get on to the the next question. Gooning or edging? Who's going first, dickhead? You guys go at the same time. Just say, just say at the same time. <laughs> well, I'm more experienced in this topic, so I'll go first. Mm -hmm. It's obviously gooning. Okay, better. I, I, I personally would prefer an edge over a goon. Okay, Dinner. okay. Absolutely disgusting. Unfortunately, unfortunately, gooning was the correct answer because edging is just edging. Gooning is all of the above which includes edging edging is a part of gooning gooning isn't a part of edging so unfortunately that, that one was gooning good. is the cycle edging breaks the cycle mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. natural um this next question skibbity or phantom tax you guys both go at the same time phantom tax phantom tax all day tax that shit. i gotta go skibbity it's phantom tax. It's phantom tax. I mean, obviously, sk skibbity, skibbity, oh. you know, obviously, you know, skibbity Riz, skibbity toilet, uh, um, skibbity Skibbity Biden, Fortnite. Don't forget but, skibbity, Fortnite. Uh, skibbity Fortnite, but, um, phantom tax, it's just so, you know, oh, I'm, I'm taxing, I'm phantom taxing, you know, it's just so much more of a, it's a catchphrase, uh, it's just more, you know, got more of a ring to it, you know, skibbity, it's overplayed, it's overplayed, phantom tax is still, a, is still a goat. Um, this next question, this next question, I, I, let's say I bet my life savings on roulette. Do I pick red or do I pick black? Uh, we'll start with Mogwonk. Black. Okay. Well, we'll better pick black, right? Uh, Mogwonk. Bet the house on black. Okay. You got, you guys both bet black. You're I'll give it me. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, we'll give it to Mogwan because he said bet the house on black. He said bet the house on black. Uh, better you just said black. you just said black we and black. and I you're lucky you didn't get disqualified for a. You feel bad for him. You feel bad for him because he's losing. <laughs> right, you know what? I was gonna say nothing. Can someone explain to me how an eclipse works if the sun is what two hundred ninety three million times so fucking bigger? What do you? What do you... Does anyone explain? What the fuck are you You're talking stalking. about? <laughs> why Why are you bringing Yo, up the I eclipse? Want fucking, I want that answer back. I want that answer back. <laughs> you sound like Jamal Hill. You sound like Jamal Hill after getting knocked out. What the... Okay, hey, hey, all right, hey, 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 let's move on. Let's move on to the next question. Right, we're, getting, we're getting to the, you know, uh, tail end of these uh, questions. What should the legal age of consent be? Now this... Okay, okay, okay. The legal age of consent includes sex, drugs, driving, tattoos, gender, all of the above. What should the age of consent be? We'll start with better. You know, I'm going to leave this one to the higher ups. I'm going to say we're going to keep it where it is. Not going to rock the boat. I'm going to say we're going to keep it at 18. It's it's everything. Everything. Include alcohol, drugs. You're saying 18. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty reasonable. Mm, yeah, mm, Mogwonk. Yeah, I say abolish the entire thing. Hmm. Abolish consent laws. Hmm. That's just, it's just gonna have to go to better. Obviously, that's for better because I did <laughs> include gender. That includes gender surgeries and everything. You know what? What do you want? You know, two year olds becoming you know fem boys and shit. Come on, Mogwonk. Have a have a have a conscience, man. Jeez, Louise. It's, it's natural selection. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> I will move, we'll move on to the uh, to the next one. Uh, this is the last question, actually. This is the last question, and I think it's the most important question. Is Santa Claus real? We'll start with better. Is Santa Claus real? Fuck no, because poor kids don't get anything on Christmas. Boom, mic drop, big facts. Mogwunk? I think Father Christmas is just as real as any other fucking thing that we have no proof for. So, if you're going to say this is real that you can't prove, how can you disprove Santa? So you're saying Santa him? Claus is real? Absolutely. Disprove okay. him. Uh, and, and you're right. <laughs> and you're right, Santa Claus is real. Uh, what are the explain? Why, why do uh, presents magically appear under my tree? And why are the cookies eaten? Why is the milk drank? Um... Well, that's not why my would parents. There be my workshop if there was no Santa. Uh, yeah. exact. How are kids all around the world uh getting presents and everything? My parents are asleep. They're in bed. It, it can't be them. Um. So yes, you are, you are correct on that. Mogwuk. Uh, Santa Claus is real. Um. Right. So comments down below. Right. Take it. Take that into consideration. Who do you think won these uh general questions? And we'll get into the next segment. I had messaged these two uh, fine young gentlemen before uh, the podcast started of some pre-made questions. We're going to start off with the first one. I asked both of you to create a thumbnail for a uh, for a video. I want both of you to show your thumbnails. Um, I want Better to show yours first, and we'll analyze it. And then Mogwonk, you'll show yours right after. So Better, I believe, if you just pull it up through the Discord. Okay. You see it now? Um, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is my rendition on uh, MMA YouTubers if they went to the uh, Michael Rubin White party. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send it in chat as well in case you want to, like, put it on the screen or something. Mm -hmm. No, that it. that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, you see, if you see it has uh, Mr. Rubin uh, front and center, okay. uh, grabbing on some of his boy toys. You know, we've got some, you know, nice colorful background with some, you know, grapes, you know, kind of like, you know, throwing back to uh, Greek or, you know, um, Roman times uh, with a lot of Bacchanalia vibes, you know, and uh, uh, you got the, uh, the eyes of Mr. Rubin in the background there. But I hope you guys like my masterpiece and uh, mm. nice Tower of Babel, um, Mogwonk, nice Tower of Babel there. Mm. Um, uh, th let me, can yeah, I, let I me just give my thoughts on this and analyze it a little bit. And um, I think this is a fantastic thumbnail. And you said it's for the uh, Michael Rubin White Party. Can you explain that a little bit and explain what this video uh, would be? Um, sure. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna end. Uh... All right. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. I'm still here, right? I'm still here. Yes, you're still here. Okay, cool. Ma Mogwonk's um, laughing sorry. at you, by the way. Mogwonk is laughing at you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 perfectly all right. Um, mm. but uh, you said you wanted me to explain what this video would be about. Yeah, and, and what is the Michael Rubin White Party? Explain both of them. Well, uh, the Michael Rubin White Party. If um, those who are unaware, it's a July Fourth party, which actually uh, happened uh, quite recently. It was recently July Fourth. And uh, this individual, Michael Rubin, I believe he is the uh, owner of Fanatics. Uh, he's business partner with Fanatics, and he has many, many business ventures. He's a uh, billionaire, uh, friends with many, many famous athletes and celebrities, both within the uh, music and entertainment industry. And he's most known for getting handsy with them at this uh, all-white party that he um, throws. And so I just would have uh, put some some MMA fighters who I think would have fit in that scene, you know, fit in that party scene and uh, who would feel comfortable in the arms of uh, the kind of Mr. Rubin. Uh, and that's what I sh uh, tried to, um, you know, show there with my, uh, with my piece. I'm just putting it into the, uh, the chat right now. Give me a second. 
Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, very, Google. very good thumbnail. Uh, color theory is amazing. A lot of good uh, contrasting colors. Obviously, uh, the thumbnail in general showing the specific fighters that you showed. I believe it was Ian, Gary, Sean O'Malley, Kevin Holland. I think two of those are very perfect uh, examples. Obviously, Ian Gary is, you know, I don't know why you would put Ian Gary in there. He's kind of like a Sigma male, and he would never do that. I just want to say that, put that out there. He's uh, one of the best fighters in the UFC right now. Um, best striker in the UFC. Um, still, uh, I'd say a very, um, I'll rate that a, an 8 out of 10 thumbnail. I think it's very eye-catching. I think it's a very intriguing uh, um, video idea. And we'll move on to Mogwonk. So Mogwonk, uh, bring Are you sure you don't want to give it a 9, though? Are you sure you don't want to well, give it a 9? We'll, we'll see what Mogwonks looks like. We'll see what Mogwonks looks like. Mogwonk, pull up uh, your thumbnail and explain it for us. You, you pull up mine, will you? You're on, like, the computer and shit. Uh, it's in the chat. Go ahead. Go. You're such a fucking weasel. You're going to hey. make me pull it up for you? Yeah, that's the that's host. if Get you make if you make off. me pull it up for you, that's minus one point, minus one point off the bat. Don't need it. No, someone's cocky, huh? You know, Mogwonk, you didn't do good in those questions. You did not do good in those questions. All right, so this is Mogwonk's. Um, as I said, minus one point for making me pull it up. Another minus one point off the bat. Wow. Another minus one point off the bat because it's not even in the format of a thumbnail. This is just like a portrait. It's in the format of a portrait. It's not even in the right dimension. It's not even in the right dimensions for a thumbnail. It's not even in nine by sixteen. Oh <laughs> Mugwug, my! You fucked up so bad. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, big time. Um, oh my god. Yeah, that's what I was making while I was shitting uh, before I joined Discord. So I made that in like twenty minutes. Oh my god. So okay, yeah. okay. Explain, explain, um, the the video and explain the thumbnail. Look, see. Oh, look, yeah, I know what you mean. Fuck me. I don't know why it's sounded like that. So, yeah, of course, we've got the Tower of Babel. Or as better, wrongly said, the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, of course, we've got Sean O'Bally. Um, we've got Rip Monov. We've got... Um, couldn't think of one for Makashev, but um, I will be talking about Islam Makashev very soon. I don't want to give anything too, like, too much away, if you get me. Mm -hmm. And I've got some shit about Alex Pereira to talk about, but not right now because there's a lot of shit going on about magic and stuff. Mm -hmm. So to me, all four of them, um, I can't explain why they would be evil. And of course, the Tower of Babel. This is like a child's drawing. Um, very wholesome. Something you see like stuck on your fridge. Um, everything hand-drawn completely. <clears throat> but yeah, it's kind of like a, it's like a kid's cartoon. It's completely shit. But I did make it in 20 minutes, and I'm still very proud of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a good... It would be a good thumbnail if it was the right dimensions. Um, I would give it a 7 out of 10. But nah, seeing as though you get minus 2 that. points for it's not even a thumbnail, and you made me pull it up, uh, it is unfortunately <laughs> a fi an abysmal 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. Um, yeah. But, hey, I mean, that's kind of all on you. That's kind of all on you, fucking retard. Hard, how do you, my dude, how do you make it not even the right dimensions, bro? Like, what the fuck? All right, but, hey, we'll move on to the uh, to the next one. I, I asked these two young, fine gentlemen to pick their top five races slash nationalities in order. So I want to start off with uh, Mokwonk. What are your top five races slash nationalities? Okay, well, first of all, I'm not a traitor, so Irish, but that is... Number them, too, Belfast. number them. Say number one Irish like that, right? Number one top Irish, okay? For many reasons, but of, of course, you know, I'm not a fucking... I'm not a backstabber. Number two, we have Russians. I fucking love Russians. Russians have always been super based. Bring back the Soviet Union. Bring back all that shit. I love Russians. I love that shit number two so then number three we've got native alaskans which are actually a race of people but um you know like chuck chi peninsula sort of fucking cunts up fishing and ice holes they're my third favorite fourth favorite i wouldn't say i really want to limit it to states but i'm gonna to have to say the united states of america okay i do love my patriotic brothers and number five i gotta go with the dutch even though i actually hate dutch people I love their land so much that I would actually be willing to move there more than anywhere else. So, 
Number one, Irish. Two, Russian. Three, native Alaskans. Four, Americans. And then five, Dutch. Okay, very, um... <clears throat> Very odd list, I must say. Um, Mogwa, or, uh, uh, better, what are your top five races slash nationalities? Uh, well, number one, very easy. We all know what it is. Number one, United States of America, baby. Ob I mean, greatest country obviously. on this I earth mean, as of obviously. right now. Greatest country that this earth has ever seen. Greatest country, greatest constitution greatest bill of rights we could go on and on and on mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. uh second number two uh behind the american race is the human race okay oh, that being okay. all other That's humans true. outside of america all other humans okay mm -hmm. third just going all asians model minorities you know what i mean they pull up they get work done hard work ethic you know what i mean and then and they brought msg to america Make food taste so yummy. Make food taste so good. Okay, so that's what? Number three, right? Number four, got to go with my blacks, my black people. All right, I love black people. All right? I bet you do. They season that food. Keep going. They season their food. They're very athletic. And they're great at being loud and shit. Um, number five, Dominicans. All they know is hookah and baseball. Hookah and baseball. Mm. Ask Waldo Cortez Acosta about that. Ask half the MLB. Boy. We're all Dominicans, baby. <clears throat> yeah, so both Katie of you guys. Is, yeah, both of you guys are. Uh, okay, okay, shut the fuck up. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, both of you guys' fucking lists are crazy and disgusting. I don't know why you have blacks and Asians in your top people. I mean, honestly, what the hell? Um, crazy. And then Mogwonk, what the fuck were you? Th Russians and the Dutch and. You're fucking out of your mind. Uh, I mean, that's obviously going to have to go to better MMA. And I didn't even want to give it to better MMA because why, why are you putting Asians and blacks in the top five, bro? I mean, what the? I, I think bad list from both of you. Obviously, but better had Americans, number one. I think that's just the easiest. It's I see what's easiest. going on here. I see what's going on. Uh, yeah, you Battle do. Monkey you do see what's going on. You're losing, Mogwonk. You see what's going on. You're losing right now, Mogwonk. Unless it's his way of doing it. Okay, okay. Um... We'll get on the next question, right? Uh, I asked both hey. these two young men, uh, give me one MMA YouTube scenario. So, obviously, we've all heard uh, Law MMA talk about, like, farting on MMA Joey's face and everything. Um, and Rigo making these, like, great fantasies and everything. So, I wanted them to both make one singular MMA YouTube scenario about MMA YouTube. We'll start off with Mogwonk. Mogwonk, uh, just tell us your MMA YouTube scenario. So my MMA YouTube scenario is more like the way you say there's no fairy tales in MMA. There's no fairy tales in MMA YouTube either. So we will see Guru go out like Wings of Redemption and he will have like Sunny V2 videos made about him where it's like going through his entire downfall and how Guru basically, you know, exploded. Um, Rigo is going to become a complete alcoholic. He's going to completely sever himself from this community. He will go to El Salvador and get Put in the what is it terrorism confinement center um yeah i can see rigo latino maxing a bit too hard and getting mistaken for a gang member and then batter i think batter will get fed up once batter has like 10 rigos in his chat i think he'll move on to something else um eagle you're just gonna leave youtube and never say anything to anyone and then who does that even leave us i had this all written down but it's on my phone i can't actually see it right now but it's more just like my perfect scenario is that everyone in MMA YouTube has some sort of tragic end to their life slash career and no one gets out of this game unscathed. Mm. Um, just like MMA. Yeah, okay. There's there's still a couple more people. I'm going to get... Yeah, right, better. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll give you a little bit of a redemption, Mogwan, because you're like so far behind in this contest. I mean, it's it's kind of nope. crazy. You, you had a great you know, segment on the podcast, but now you're kind of just fucking whiffing it. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of redemption. I'll give you a couple more YouTubers that you missed. Um, Lucas Tracy. What do you think is going to happen to Lucas Tracy? I think Lucas Tracy will be one of those guys that like, act like nothing bad happens to him for like the most part. We'll see him just rise, get that success. He might get the ESPN interviews Guru always wanted. 
and kind of like because he's more PC, maybe get out more outreach than Guru. But I think at some point down the line, it'll be like a massive grooming scandal or like um, some Liver King arc that he goes down with like steroids or something. And I think Lucas will get a massive scandal against him. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, Lost Soul MMA. I have no words for Lost Soul MMA. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and, and the last one would be MMA Joey. <laughs> Cardiac arrest is such an easy cop-out answer, you know? Mm. Such an easy cop-out answer. I'm going to say that MMA Joey still makes the exact same content and barely gets any subscriber boosts and literally will just sit and rant to his computer for toppings for the rest of his life, which is probably not that long. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so I, I do have to knock you down a little bit for that because I had to help you out and give you some, you know, YouTubers that you forgot. Um, but still pretty good, pretty good uh, scenario. We'll get on to better MMA. What is your YouTube MMA uh, scenario? Well, uh, my YouTube scenario is, uh, you could say it's almost a lesson and a tale as old as time. Hmm. Uh, I've given it uh, its own name or title for the story. This being the prodigal gooner. Uh, Rigo, a hardworking content creator on MMA YouTube who worked very hard to put a roof over his children's head. Lossal MMA and Arge Kamrukian. Uh, Lossal, his younger son, probably would get caught in a gooner lifestyle and pounding his pecker relentlessly and eventually would run away uh, in the night to Armenia to search for his family's ancient goon cave. Uh, there in Armenia, he plundered his goon coin by throwing it at flexible men doing axe kicks, such as Armin Sarukian, while Arge Kamrukian worked the fields of his father relentlessly. The halls grew silent, and every waking moment exaggerated the fact that Arge Kamrukian cannot be twice the son that Rigo needed. So one sunny evening, while Rigo was vaping on his porch, he sees the eclipse. He sees the eclipse of a stunny, of a stummy. He sees. He's vaping on his porch and he sees the eclipse of a stummy through the shot, through the sun shining over the hillside. Could it be lost soul, Rigo's begotten son, come to shake his stummy around the pasture? Rigo rejoices runs to Lost Soul and celebrates by stretching Lost Soul by putting his legs on Rigo's shoulders and lengthening his hamstrings. My ham hawks, Lost Soul cries. Arge Kamrukian hears this from the fields and he comes home startled as he sees his brother, Lost Soul, being stretched out by Papa Rigo. So flexible, brother, says Arge Kamrukian. But Papa, when do, you when do you stretch me, brother? Rigo looks to Arge and says, stretch for stretch, grape for grape, my son was lost, but has been found. That's, that's my, that's it. I'm done. That was, um, <laughs> that was perfect. That was fucking perfect. I think, I mean, listen, I don't like to be playing size or anything, but I think better you absolutely blew Mogwonk out of the water with that scenario. I think even Mogwonk could agree with that, right? I think Mogwonk could even oh, agree yeah. with that. That was fantastic. That was like, um, it was, um, Shakespearean. Shakespearean. That's what it was. That's the exact word I was going to use is Shakespearean. It was, it was, it was classical. It was, it was well thought out. You could tell there was a clear, you know, exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and conclusion. Uh, very, um, very just, uh, well made. Very well made. Um, I think that's an easy, Easy, easy round for uh, uh, Better May. And, all right, so we'll get into the next segment of this. I asked these two young men to prepare a roughly five-minute, right? It just can't go over five minutes necessarily. A five-minute speech about their channel. Um, and I'll just absolutely give the floor. You have five minutes to say whatever you want about your channel, about, you know, your opponent, you know, Mogwonk or better, about Rigo, about a video you've made. Five minutes to say anything you want. We'll start off with the 
right now, loser, uh, Monk Monk Zerg, so you got five minutes to say your speech. Okay, so I think a lot of these creators in TikTok, YouTube, etc., have these massive, massive channels, loads of sub growth. They abuse the algorithm. They do whatever they can to like get every last sub. Yet they're not getting nearly the amount of views or likes as their sub count shows. At the minute, I'm sitting on about 52, 54 subscribers and getting about 30 likes, 20 likes, 30 comments, etc. So I really want to keep that progressing the whole way. So I'm not really focused on getting like these massive dumps of subscribers. So if I can sit and take my time, make the videos I want to make, be creative, be a perfectionist, um, stream when I want to stream, don't get burnt out. I think that like creativity wise, I mog, you know, not many people have like what I've got in the locker ready to go. Um, I come out here with cosplay. Um, I have no problem speaking my mind. Um, you know, it's not like, it's not like people don't have their own opinions. It's like they can only go so far with their opinion and then they kind of have to sit on the fence a little bit and, you know, give credit to the other side where I like to live in a world where it's just say how you feel and then, you know, circle back if you need to. But content wise, it's all going to be niche, never seen before shit, or it's going to be a completely original spin on something that's already been done. Now, are you smarter than an MMA, MMA YouTuber? Is the only one I can think of now. There'll be like a, a show that I do with multiple YouTubers. But to have that sort of, you know, building like this here, the Eagle's Nest, right? You've got me and Better on. That's three MMA YouTubers in one video, giving each other like, you know, the shout outs, whatever, getting the community like behind us, getting like the inside jokes and like the banter kind of, kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't know, just our community alone, if you get me. Like, they'll understand <clears throat> the Moglonk jokes from Eagle rather than me just being a completely separate entity. And I kind of like having that both, where I have my own shit and I have the Rigiverse and the Eagers and the better fucking guys, but whatever. But um, I don't know. I just really want my own little community that um, I can maybe make, like, half a living off. Maybe take a few hours off my salary. And that's about it, to be honest. Just creative shit, um, cosplay, narcotics, substances, racism, transphobia, you name it. That was actually very, the very heartfelt uh, speech from Mogwunk. That was very good. That was very good. That might just, you know, win you back for uh, the audience uh, right here. Um, and uh, better, better. It is time for you to give your five-minute uninterrupted speech. So just go right ahead. Yeah, well, I'm not some, like, narcissistic creative type who thinks I'm, like, you know, God's gift to the earth and thinks I'm going to, like, create, you know, these next piece, you know, like, masterpieces to, like, save everybody's life, you know? I'm a man of the people. I'm a man of the people. I'm pulling up every single day to stream. You boys know that. Check out my channel. I'm streaming every single day. I'm the only person who is doing a fight companion for Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal's boxing match, and I got the best commentary voice in the game. Come watch my commentary. Come see the way I get excited by violence, man. You're not going to want to watch, you know, over-emotional, you know, he needs his, you know, cholesterol, diabetes shot, Mr. Guru. You want you don't want to see, you know, Lucas Tracy putting pins in his butt saying, oh, I need to get juiced at 5'4", bro. And he's talking about, you know, Robert Whitaker being Mr. Plotty. I mean, these people don't know what they're talking about. These people don't know what they're talking about. You come to Better MMA, you get the better takes. You come to Better MMA, you get the better vibes. You come to Better MMA, you get the better commentary. You get everything better here at Better MMA. And I give you guys the pics videos. I give you guys the funny takes. Man, I, I do it all. There's really um, nothing that I can't do, as you've seen from this podcast so far. I mean, speak about creative genius. Peep my thumbnail. In a moment, you about to peep these bars. That's all I got to say. That was that was very good. And I'm not even going to judge either of those. I... I loved Mogwonks. I loved Better's Better. I love the uh, the better content. Better, you get better content at Better MMA. I made it up. Mm -mm, but, you're, but you're taking more of a, a brand and, a, and more of a side and everything, which I'm just going to say, I was the one who told you to do that. I um, just want to put that out there. I made it up. Uh, I mean, I, I, I made it up. I, I mean, I gave you the inspiration to make it up, but I just want to, you know. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's move on. Hey, let's move on. Uh, the last segment before our very last segment 
is I asked these two young men to prepare some bars for a freestyle rap battle. All right, so we're starting off with Better MMA. He's going to hit a freestyle rap for us. Better, whenever you're ready, take the cake. Y'all, y'all ready for this shit? All right, let me let me let me get this shit going. Hold on, give me one second. Mm. You ready for this shit, Mog Wonk? Are we ready up? for this shit, Mog? Ni hao ma. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, alright, alright. After that. Alright. Better MMA up in this bitch. Shout out Eagle. Shout out Gnome Truth. And shout out Rigo. Smoking on Mogwonk pack all day. Already know what it is. Better vibes, better takes, better MMA what we do yeah yeah mom went with the ira couldn't rep a garden plot we got big guns in usa we see a brit and blow his top yeah 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 just another day in the ira just another day, the British having their way. Lucky if your grave is not bombarded, Mog Wonk. Nephew's name will also be Muhammad, Mog Wonk. Your family's Muslim now. You looking like a goofy. If you're Michael Bisting, I'm Kelvin with the two piece. You get your ass flat line all on the pavement. Follow up shots look like Stevens versus Davis. See, I'm over honest. Mog Wonk look like Pocahontas. Cut your hair, boy. A shape up was a broken promise. Cut your hair, boy. Got you looking like a girl. All those footwork drills, boy. Got you running like a squirrel. See, I'm shaded up. Wesley Snipes, I'm bladed up. Only vamp I fuck with is his girl. She laid me up. That's right, I cut the boy. Made a trip, I fucked the boy. Irish slag, I dumped the boy. Yeah, yeah. Up in the gap, I punked the boy. Smelled like fish and a pint of Guinness. Watch my theory and I couldn't even finish. I'm done. That was some bars, bro. That was some bars. That was heat. That was heat, bro. That was heat. Couldn't even finish the fight fair, bro. That's actually, that's actually sad, bro. Um, <laughs> that was bars, though. That was bars, though. I couldn't finish. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, so we're back. We're about to get Mog Wonk's freestyle rap. So, Mog Wonk, let's listen to this absolute masterpiece, let's assume. Let's let's uh hit a listen. <laughs> Dip, dip, splash. Dick batter down. Leave him with genital rash. Stomp and mash. Archbond's back and blast. The Your boy turns it, quick bro? for the cash. Whip his ass with the lash. Your Don't godfather's down to shit. smash. Come in his cheeks and dash. Yeah, all my boys are sodomites. Unbuckle that shit, you better not fight. I'm not talking shit, I'll pop and suck his dick on sight. Damn, his foreskin's tight. Lather him up and jerk him right. Suck man down till he sees the light. Duck his straight, cause he's bent. Won't take me long to pitch his tent. He'll be my bitch for rent while I stab this snitch and vent. Never off cocks were lent. Yeah, diddle his penis <laughs> like banjo. Diddle his weenus, unchained Django. Oh Rip his string, at that's that. a rusty handjo. Yo, Eagle that Eagle was Eagle. crazy, bro. That was, what was it? Uh, what, something his weenus? What the fuck was that? Bro, bro, let me just, that, that was actually fucking fire, bro. That was actually some fucking bars, bro. I don't even, bro, I don't even know who to give that to because those two were both fucking crazy. I'm going to say that was a tie. Honestly, I'm going to say the rap battle was a, was a tie because you two both put on an absolute uh, spectacle. Uh, right, but we'll we'll get on to the last segment here. We'll get on to the last segment here. Uh, we're going to have each one of you, for 30 seconds, praise and absolutely glaze your opponent. And then the next 30 seconds, you're going to absolutely rip into them and say anything you want negative. Say they are gay. Say they're an F slur. But you're not going to say the real slur because I don't want to have to fucking edit that out. Uh, say anything negative about them. So, Mogwonk, we'll start with you first. 30 seconds of positive, 30 seconds of negative. You're on the clock. Batter is one of the best minds in MMA YouTube. 
subscriber count means literally nothing. You can tell by the thought processes, the way he describes things. I don't, I don't want to keep going on the same topic. Very great mind. Seems like a really humble guy in person. Can't see past the sunglasses, but um, I would trust him a lot more than other people from people you know through YouTube that I don't know. Seems like a good guy. I reckon we get along well in person. Um, yeah, the guy's really fun. I like the guy. Mm -hmm. Big batter fun. Mm -hmm. All right, that's your 30 seconds. Now, 30 seconds of negative. Rip into better MMA. Okay, okay. You cannot take the negative side. You don't have the fucking mindset for it, okay? You're fragile. You're breakable. You're breedable. Little alts in the chat will send you fucking crying. You'll literally retire forever off one fucking person, Rigo. Um, yeah. I said what I needed to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, better, better. 30 seconds of positive glaze and then 30 seconds of uh, negative. Go right ahead. Okay, okay. We don't, we don't need that. Okay, we don't need that. <laughs> that's a foul. That's a foul. I get like two free throws. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. I get two he, free throws. He's, he's already so far behind. I get two behind. free throws. Bro, he's already so far behind. All right, all right. 30 seconds of positive and 30 seconds of negative. 30, 30 seconds of blazing. All right, Mogwonk. I will say that Mogwonk within him, he can be Cage Warriors double champion. You know, he can knock the fuck out of Harry Hardwick and George Hardwick if he really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? He could put the paws on those boys. Uh, I see him doing his drills. You know, he's um, a very good uh, sports better on that. When it comes to the MMA side, check out his Instagram, Mogwonk. Uh, his Instagram, he posts, you know, how well he did on the last pay-per-views. And he has a lot of solid picks and parlays that he picks and goes through. Um, so somebody who I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for in the future when it comes to his picks and uh, betting, things of that nature. Um, negative. And uh, negative. he's from Ireland. He's That's not 30 from seconds. Britain. That's 30 seconds. He's from That's 30 Ireland. Seconds. Negative. 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 Mogwonk. Okay. You look like Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy, bro. Okay. And you you could say you look like maybe like lesbian Bradley Cooper with the uh, the mustache and the haircut. You know what I'm saying? And like I said in my bars, bro, that shape up was a broken promise, boy. Go to a Dominican barber, bro. They'll get you the fade up, bro. Um, the orange jumpsuit, you'll probably be in a real one in real life very soon because only God knows what you do late night at those bars and what you put in those drinks to those poor girls. You can only imagine he's the Irish strangler. Um, all right, all right, and all this, ball, all this ball. That's it. That's work. it. That's it. That's the 30 seconds. Um, great from both of you. I think that's, that's up to the people to decide who was a better glazer and who was a better uh, roaster. Um, and we're going to get with the very ending of this, right? You guys both did amazing. I think my winner, my personal winner, is going to have to be in three, two, one. It's going to be better MMA. It has to be better MMA. He did much better on the first uh, impromptu questions. He actually made a real thumbnail. <laughs> hey, he actually made a real thumbnail. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, you know, it's, you know, but hey, it's up ultimately for the fans to decide. So fans, we're going to get one last little segment in here and then make sure you drop a like on the comment in which you think who won, right? Better MMA or Mog Wong Zerg Zerg. But we're going to get you guys some plugs, right? You guys are going to plug yourselves because you guys did absolutely fantastic. This was a great, this is like a monumental episode of uh the eagles nest i think this was fucking amazing so uh better oh. may plug everything and anything you want uh yeah check out my channel uh better mma b-e-t-t-r mma um i make pics videos i do streams almost daily uh, I have an Instagram where I mainly just post like UFC memes on my story that I think are funny, but that's better.mma if you want to follow me on uh, IG over there. Um, but yeah, uh, better MMA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Mogwonk, plug everything and anything you want. Everyone better be subscribed to every single channel in the Regoverse, in the Regoverse, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, better MMA, Eagle MMA. Mogwong Zerg, Zerg, all of us. I want all of us to come up together. Instagram, you know, subscribe to 
No, nope. your channel name or anything. Nope. Find it on your own. That, that's Find it. it. That's it. All right. Well, uh, listen. It was great having both of you for this historic, monumental episode of the Eagles Nest podcast. Do any of you have any final parting words? Praise Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. Mogwonk, you agree? Amen. I'm assuming. Yes, yes. Well, listen, this was a fantastic episode. Like, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel, Better MMAs, Mogwonk, Zerg, Zergs. All the links will be in the descriptions. Uh, in the description. I'm having a stroke right now. In the description, there are Instagrams as well. So, hey, I'm just going to end it right there. Did you enjoy this video? Yes, you did. Eagle MMA out. Out.